This did not feel like an extra AEW show. This did not feel like Dynamite on a Saturday night. This felt not just like a whole new show. This felt like a brand new promotion that was getting off the ground for show one here. You know, the funniest thing is it wasn't until today that I figured out what one Phil, one Bill Phil was supposed to be about. Because he's telling the story, and I'm trying to figure out, why is he calling you one bill, like one dollar? Or is it like a hundred dollar bill? Or what's he talking about? It's supposed to be one billion. The bill is billion. Oh, because they're, they're playing off the rumors that AEW had signed a billion dollar deal, I which see. they have not. I like that he spent uh, most of the promo talking about the wrestling business and then at the end he brings in gets in a jab on the counterfeit bucks are they going to do business or is that just a no. cheap line there's not going to be a punk elite feud and i think punk even in that that espn interview said the, the match is not going to happen so you know i know a lot of people heard it and thought oh my god they're, they're going to be doing the match they're going to be doing the match they're not going to be doing the match. That whatever he said was whatever he said, but it was not to set up a future match with CM Punk and FTR versus the Elite or whatever. This fucking bug. God damn it. Eat it. Sorry. Eat it. I'm not going to eat it. It happened the last time. I swallowed a bug. I hope it was ah. a big one. Ah. Mm. My wife is asking what happened. And, and you ate explained. a bug. Buddy Matthews versus Andrade El Idolo. Oh. God damn, was this fucking match great or what? This was yep. a match straight out of a great Japan show. I was very surprised when Andrade came out and nobody booed him. For, no, he's you know, loved punch. it. Yeah, he, he punched Sammy, but nobody seemed to care about that. Understood, Sammy's got a very punchable face. And as much as we think that all fans know that everything is going on or what's going on or whatever, a lot of yep. them don't have any idea. And right. I can't tell you how many times people ask, like, you know, why aren't they doing anything with Miro? Why aren't they doing I mean, we'd mentioned it a thousand times. He didn't want to do jobs. And you can't book a guy that doesn't want to do jobs. Right. And that was it. That was the story. And now he's back. Bullet Club Gold and Samoa Joe versus FTR and CM Punk. There was a half hour left in this show when this thing began. I thought, man, there's going to be some huge angle after this. No, they just wrestled for a half hour, and it was awesome. Juice body slams him, shouts something like, I gotcha! And he does a standing sent on and turns and looks at him and he goes, ha ha! Juice was awesome in this match, if I mentioned that. I thought the show was great. The main event was great. My only complaint about the show, they announced zero matches for Collision next week. That's true. Zero. Not yeah. one single match was announced for Collision next week. Come on in, Pace. Why don't you come say hi to everybody? What is all over your face? Oh my god, that's my child! Hey, Hannah, come in here, say hi to everybody! Do you got s'mores all over your face, kid? Why don't you come over here and say hi? What do you want to say? Uh, no. oh, yeah, I don't know no, either. No. Get out of here. No, no. Okay, get out of here. In one sentence, tell us you're a wrestling fan without telling us you're a wrestling fan. Oh, that should be interesting now, shouldn't it? Now, uh, I don't even know what that means, Brian. <laughs> it means, how could you tell us that you are a wrestling fan? Without actually telling us that you're a wrestling fan. Hmm? My dogs are named Moxley, Muda, and Razor Ramona. <laughs> I drive a Suzuki, which we've named Minoru. <laughs> All right. Jericho, Hurricane, and Matt Hardy are in the same car. Who will drive? Police officer. Oh, wow. oh God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And people look back and they remember all sorts of things like, you know, the Johnsons and, you know, the dancing girls and Mortimer Plum Tree and this and that. By far the worst thing on this show by a fucking country mile was Ed fucking Ferrara. Yes. Yep. God. Uh, 100%. 100%. Damn it. Jesus Christ. How long is this guy doing commentary? I can't take it. Let's start this show with midgets. Midgets are the stars of this country. This is the uh, same man who later on down the road is pleasuring himself in a trash can. Oh. Spoilers, dude. Yeah, yeah come on. Don't spoil it for everybody. <laughs> you don't want to see it coming? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because Francine came out of what appeared to largely be lingerie. I was, uh, then... I was happy to see she had a job because she had no visual means of support. <laughs> Craig's been waiting all 21 years to get that joke here on the air. The Johnsons. 
And there two is, coxmen. There is a <laughs> two dicks come out. The dups. Jesus Christ. I Stan forgot. Dup. Stan Dup and Bo, Bo Dup. Dup. And their cousin slash mutual girlfriend, Fluff Dup. Yeah, the storyline is they are all related mm -hmm. and they're all dating. Yeah. Every single one of these shows was on pay-per-view. And they had two hours to not only to, to, to make you happy you purchased this pay-per-view and convince you to buy another one in seven days' time. I would record this, and then Brian and Vinny would get in a car on Friday and drive an hour and ten minutes to my house to watch this to was, save yeah. nine ninety nine. So, well, you know, gas prices were cheaper Craig, back then. We also wanted to see our friend Craig. <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. I did not go. <laughs> Sean didn't give two fucks about Craig. He was not going to watch this fucking show. We are off to a shitty start. Yeah. <laughs> we certainly but are. a start it is, everybody. There's no real... Like, what's the feud? What's Who's CM Punk going after? You know, we've got an eight-man tag. Um, hello? You know, Dave wasn't a big fan of it, and Mike Sempervivi was not a big fan of it. Well, we got Sodnam Singh and Jeff Jarrett and... Yeah. This may be a short show. Brian's fixing the window. Uh, he's wearing shorts, as you can see there. Shortly before we went on the air, Brian said, it's hot. I'm going to put shorts on. And he stepped off camera, thankfully. But I could hear Brian undressing and dressing. I assure you, this is every bit as traumatic as watching him would have been. So I've been through a lot of you people. I suffer for you people. They draw a name and say, oh, look at that. And they draw a name and say, oh, look at that. And we all just move on. This is paid off later, but that was so annoying. I thought this was an excellent go-home show. And I thought that, that uh, Collision was a great show. But there's a lot of weird things that are going down in, in AEW lately that, you know, Tony Khan is a very, very um, detail-oriented guy. And so it's surprising when when just, like, little details are the way that they are. And this was one of them. Like, what the fuck is a blind eliminator? Why can't you tell us? We have brackets for the Owen Hart tournament. The there's another one. <laughs> Why wasn't this announced in the opening segment when he was out there celebrating after he'd done his run-in? Why wasn't this announced with a big graphic like, oh my God, CM Punk will have his first singles match in almost a year coming up at the pay-per-view Sunday. Instead, it was like, hey, here's some brackets. CM Punk, Kojima Sunday. The money begins to rain. The coins fall. The place goes ape fucking shit. And this stare down with Okada and Danielson was like, I had not had chills watching a wrestling show like this in a long, 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 long time. Maybe since the last time Okada appeared on Dynamite, actually. <laughs> My dreary upbringing was brightened by escaping reality and diving into the images generated in my mind. I've been rejected by friends, by family, by life. That's what makes me unique. That's what sets me apart from everyone else. This is an unlikable, pretentious, hateable, stupid person, and I hope she suffers a severe beating. Wow. But man, they give these women horrible lines. And the women Ava, universally get worse dialogue than the men. It's, Ava it's... finally says, shut up. Our tree will not fall from one single chop. I <laughs> went, what? Then it gets better. And by better, I mean much, much worse. All right. She storms off. And then JC, I wish I could just have a repeating animated gif of this, says, Oh, I should just kick her in the face. And storms off crying. <laughs> I was crying. This is really, really good. My only question is, why did we not see this about Von Wagner 18 months ago? Because ta when you have a guy with a story this real and this authentic and this believable and this... I don't. I, I guess traumatic's the right word, but this guy has been through a lot of shit, and we should have been told that a year ago. This match did a great quarter. It essentially hit a million viewers by the end of this show, and this show usually averages, you know, what, uh, 600, 650,000 or whatever the normal, the average is. So uh, he he brought the viewership.